episode seven of season five Homeland, Oriole, has certainly been a pretty unpopular episode in the fandom. I've already written my thoughts up about the episode on LiveJournal, so I'll try not to duplicate anything that I've already said there. It's been interesting browsing through everybody's comments and seeing what they liked and didn't like about the episode. Some of the complaints have been really strange. They range from things like, why is Carrie driving a crappy car when During is rich and probably had nicer cars in his garage? Um, why are the jihadists speaking to one another in German? Why is Carrie still wearing that crappy wig? Why did the cabbie in Amsterdam have such a strong Israeli accent? Why do CIA computers have USB drives? When presumably they would be disabled? Why didn't Carrie recognise Alison on the phone? Why is everyone being so stupid about Alison and not realising that she's a double agent? And of course, from the shipper perspective, um, why are Carrie and Quinn constantly apart? Why does Carrie not seem to care that Quinn might be dead? Why doesn't Quinn seem to care about Carrie's fate? I think I've summed up most of the grievances that I've read about the episode. I'm not going to presume to address um, most of them. I just thought I'd throw them out there. There have been some interesting quotes around the place. For instance, over at previouslytv.com, someone named Albanian TV says, What I'm hating the most about the last couple of episodes is that Carrie is so alone and so is Quinn, although he doesn't seem to know that no one can trust Dar. They're good together, Carrie and Quinn, but alone they don't seem to have that great timing or flawless instinct. Then the user named Norask says, Quinn is stuck with those bumbling wannabe terrorists. I have no idea what he's doing with them and why he isn't looking for Carrie. These two together make the show for me, but now Carrie is stuck in Amsterdam, Quinn is on his way to Syria, and Saul is with Mossad. I actually don't think Quinn should be looking for Carrie, and it doesn't make sense to me that he would, but I thought that was an interesting comment. Um, someone else named Slowpoke said... And damn it, Quinn went through great lengths to protect you, so you have to be very careful about the people you keep in touch with, and make sure those people are the people you can trust 100%. I already thought she was careless contacting Laura last episode, but I understand her desperation. But her just calling Alison is just so careless to me, and very unlike Carrie, who most of the time thinks things through. Why involve Alison in what is supposed to be a very small circle of people she should be talking to. It doesn't even seem like they're close colleagues. From when they first showed us the two of them talking in the first episode, why not go back to Saul? She should feel a little relieved now, considering he did end up giving her the documents, therefore a sign that he is trusting her again. Did she forget she was supposed to be on the down low? Just last episode, she made sure Astrid knew she was supposed to be dead. That was an interesting observation, but I actually don't think Carrie's always cool and collected and thinks things through. She's actually very impulsive. So while it was a little bit annoying that she contacted Alison, it wasn't entirely outside the realms of possibility. In terms of why Quinn didn't mention Carrie to Dara Dahl in his conversation, that also made sense to me. He doesn't know who the leak is and he doesn't know who he might accidentally tip off by mentioning anything to Dara Dahl. From Quinn's perspective, he probably assumed that Carrie did what he suggested and went off into hiding and is somewhere safe. For me personally, I'm more bothered by the fact that Quinn's not trying to chase down who screwed up with the post box operation, although I suppose he's got bigger fish to fry with the jihadists. As a shipper, it's frustrating that they are you know, apart and don't seem to really be, like, they're not really caring about one another. But if you think about it, um, they're both supposed to be professionals and they're both doing their jobs right now. Part of the reason why Quinn is such a popular character is that he's very competent, he's very professional and he gets the job done. Carrie's got moments where she's not quite so professional, but generally she's very goal-oriented as well. Um, her mooning over Jonas is very heavy-handed 
But I really don't think that it's Jonas himself that she's sort of madly in love with. She's in love with the idea of what he represents, this normal life, the life that she wishes that she could have had with Brody or out of the CIA, but deep down she probably knows isn't really for her. So I'm not really sure how real that love is. I don't quite know why they need to sort of bash us over the head with it quite so many times. I mean, I get it. But to a certain extent, we're seeing things from Carrie's perspective. So she'll probably fixate on Jonas for a little while longer, I'm afraid. I don't necessarily think we should be surprised that she's not mooning over Quinn. It's been a very one-sided relationship for a very long time. While it is disappointing that she doesn't seem more concerned about a friend and a trusted colleague, like I said, she's being professional, compartmentalising, and it's probably something that she will come back to later on in a moment of quiet. Alison's character is particularly annoying to me. On the one hand, I don't want everyone to be fooled by her because that's quite frustrating. But I also hate the idea of the long con because it's been done before on the show. It would be quite annoying to me if, for instance, Dyrodile and Saul have known all along that she's a double agent and this is just a big play to, you know, draw out the Russians and to entrap her. I'm really sick of Saul being, you know, made out to be some sort of superhuman creature who knows everything. But in a way, that I guess that might be a little bit better than thinking that he's stupid. Her meltdown in the bathroom was pretty bloody obvious. Otto During's also getting a lot of commentary and hate. I think he's an interesting character. Some think he might be, you know, wanting to put the moves on Carrie. Others think he might be looking out for Jonas. Others think he might be just being quite pragmatic in terms of he likes Carrie, he's grateful to her. But, you know, he's calling a spade a spade. She's unbalanced, she's erratic, and she probably wasn't the best choice of um, chief of security for him. Although some of his long and lingering looks with Laura are a little bit dodgy. Over at the previously TV forum, um, the, the user Slowpoked said, I also like there's another layer to Doering other than just a very generous boss who has a big heart for everyone. I'm thinking there's just no way he's that nice, letting Carrie use his private jet, having Carrie take any car she likes, etc. It would be another good character to explore along the season. What is really his main motive? I have no idea. I mean, he could be involved with the Russians. He might want the documents. He might just like playing with people. I have no idea. It would kind of be annoying if he was evil because, in a way... That would mean that Saul was right yet again. And it kind of pisses me off that there's this implication that he has to be evil just because his grandfather was a Nazi. Because it's not like that sort of thing's hereditary. But we'll see where we go with that character. While a lot of people said that season four was very satisfying from a shipper perspective, I think people forget that there was a lot of disagreement and argument between the two characters for the earlier episodes. And it really wasn't until later in the season that Carrie and Quinn were working together fairly amicably. Right now, this season has the three main characters in three different locations, three different plots, but presumably all of the storylines will have to intersect soon. So I'm still quite interested to see where that goes, even though I have already said that I think that the writing's been a little bit erratic in terms of some of the um, storylines and the way they have portrayed um, Carrie in terms of her interactions with Quinn and also Quinn's responses to Carrie. Someone's pointed out that it could be that, you know, there are so many different storylines going on that some of the characterization and transitions between, you know, the storylines have suffered. Nonetheless, I've enjoyed the acting so far, and I, I think the story's been quite interesting. And as I've said before, as long as canon doesn't paint me into a corner, there's always still fan fiction. Anyway, I hope everyone keeps posting. It's been really, really interesting reading everybody's comments. 
I was reading a complaint on one of the blogs that said that um, they wanted to take part in a conversation, but the way asks are managed in Tumblr means that it's not really a conversation. It's one person putting themselves out there and the owner of the blog either agreeing or disagreeing, having the last word or making fun of the person asking. So I really like the fact that LiveJournal is allowing everyone to sort of interact a bit more. No one gets the last word. The viewpoint is not necessarily just mine, but it's, you know, anyone who wants to comment. So um, please keep posting and also please keep replying to the um, pick prompts and fic prompts and all that sort of stuff.